my name is Maria Desmondi. I'm a children's book author, and we're back this week talking about family reading time. So I write on a blog, and it's called Be the Difference, and I write for different things families can do to be the difference in the lives that they of the children they are working with or the children that they are teaching. So this book blog um, is appropriate for both parents, teachers, and caregivers. So reading in our house has been important since day one, since the children came home from the hospital. First, I'll tell you about our book locations. We have books in both of my children's bedrooms. Oh, and the baby has books in his room too. We have books in our bedroom because in the morning when my husband and I are getting ready for work, um, if I have to go off somewhere early, what have you, we do not put the television on to get ready. We try to have the children um, look at books. We also, in our bedroom, have books on tape. And so we have an old school cassette tape player along with a CD player on top. Um, you can get through Scholastic Book Orders now. You can get books on CD that are great for the kids to listen to. And you can also check them out from your local library. So it's almost like having a book on a Kindle or a book on an iPad, but it's an actual book that they can hold and listen to the story. We also have books in our cars. So when the children go on car rides, they have a little basket of books next to them that they can grab from before they get buckled in their car seat. And that's great so that you can, once again, try not to um, have the DVD player on all the time in the car because if you're watching screen time, at home, it adds up if you're also having screen time in the car. So that's where we store our books. The children's books in their bedroom, they also have a basket in their room. And um, each child has a basket in their room because this is where the library books go. We go to the library once a week, usually on Tuesdays for story time. And they get library books. And I don't have a limit. They can get as many library books as they want. Um, when our bag is full, we don't get any more library books. That's basically our limit. So they stay here in their book basket because if not, the books get lost on the bookshelf there. And then we can't find the books and we have big fees at the library. Okay, so that's where we store our books. Um, and the second thing I want to talk about with you is, I'm blanking out now, when do we read these books? So I told you in the morning, first thing in the morning, the kids browse through books. The second time we read books is before nap time or quiet time. My five-year-old who is having quiet time right now and allowing me to use her bedroom, um, she no longer naps, but we treat it as the same as nap time, quiet time. She's allowed to be in her room for a good hour, looking at books and playing with um, different quiet toys that she has in her room, as well as some writing materials that she likes to draw pictures and what have you. So during nap time, we do some books, and we come, and we just get cozy in um, the bed. We read some books, and then I go into my other daughter's room. We typically don't read together with both kids um, because they're at such different reading levels. My two-year-old's attention span is so much shorter than my five-year-old, so we try to read some books together, but most of the time we read separate books so that they're hearing stories more age-appropriate for them. Okay, so it's really important, the, then we read books before bed, and that is like our cozy family time. Sometimes we do it all together in my husband and I's bedroom, um, but most of the time we alternate between kids. So he'll read to one, I'll read to the other, and then we'll swap, and the baby kind of just goes with us, or we put the baby to bed first. Um, but what do you do during reading time is really important. And so I'm going to share with you my experiences from being a reading specialist and a teacher for many years what we want kids to know about reading. And it doesn't mean you have to have a little notebook out with you while you read to your kids at night. It's still that loving, tender moment of reading together. But there are certain questions that you can ask that will make it more effective and more beneficial to your child. It's going to be more of a learning experience as well. Okay, so let's take the book Spaghetti and the Hot Dog Bun. This is one, my first book that I wrote. Before reading the book, you can take a picture walk and have your children take a look at all the pictures and make predictions and say, what do you think is happening in this story? What do you think this story is about? That's called inferring. Being able to look at clues in the pictures and make a really good prediction of what the story might be about. Okay, so that's called um, a picture walk and that's called inferring. The next thing, you're going to begin reading the story, and you always want to read the title, the author, and the illustrator's names. That goes ahead and teaches your child about different elements and about 
um, how the story is set up. And so as you read the story, you might read a page and have your child close their eyes and see if they can create a picture in their head while you're reading. You can say, listen to the words that I'm reading and see if you can make a picture in your head. That's called a mental image. That's being able to visualize and it's a really important comprehension strategy for your child to learn. So the first one is making predictions, which is called inferences, doing a picture walk, trying to guess what's going to happen next in the story. And the next one, the second one is visualizing. The third comprehension strategy is called connections. There's three different kinds of connections you can make to a story. The first is making a connection from your life to the story, and that's called a text-to-self connection. So I can make a connection to the story because the story is really about what happened to me. But I could say, you know what? I once was teased for what I ate in the lunchroom, and I was really sad about it. I can make a text-to-self connection in this story. I can really understand what the character is going through. The second type of connection is called text-to-text. -text. So Ruby, will you hand me I like myself? Sure, Mom. Thanks. This is a text-to-text -text connection. So ask your child. Oh, remember, you can't be in the video, though. Sorry. We keep some privacy around here with my children. Um, so next is, you know, this story is very similar to another story we read. Can you think of that other story we read? Oh, yeah, it's I Like Myself. It's a story about a girl who loves who she is, and she's got this big hair, and she likes silly foods. That's just like the story Spaghetti and the Hot Dog Bun because she likes silly foods, and she is proud to be who she is. So being able to connect two different story themes or stories is called a text-to-text -text connection. And the third type of connection is called text-to-world. And that's when you're able to take a story and connect it to some type of a current event happening right now. So for example, um, in October, it's National Bully Bullying Prevention Month, and a lot of schools have assemblies and they do certain things in October. So that would be a time when you could say, oh, you know what? This is bullying month. We can make a text-to-world connection. That's happening right now in the world. We're talking about bullying at schools and trying to prevent it and help children to stand up for each other. Okay, so those are three reading strategies. We have three more to get through. And I wouldn't do all of these strategies while you're reading one book. Start with one or two and then build up. And as a parent, maybe you keep a notebook with you the first few times, but then it just becomes a part of your reading style with your children and you're asking them questions and you're having them visualize and um, make predictions. So the fourth one is asking questions. When do we ask questions while we're reading? Before, during, and afterwards. So before your child reads the book or you read your book to the child, you wanna ask them some questions during reading, ask some questions about the story, and then afterwards ask them some questions. The fourth reading strategy is um, determining importance, and that is really important in nonfiction texts. You want to be able to have them remember facts that they're learning, but in fiction it's important as well because it's called the author's message. So you can say, oh, I get it. I figured out what's really important in this story. It's all about having the courage to be yourself no matter what. And so that's the author's message. So helping your child to really understand why did somebody write this book? What is the message that they're trying to share with us? And finally, um, summarizing. Being able to retell a story. And you can talk about story elements. Um, you can talk about the characters. Where's the setting? What happened first, next, then, last? Um, what's the problem and what is the solution? So being able to summarize the story and tell someone else. So those are six reading comprehension strategies, really important to incorporate in your nightly reading. Remember, you're not gonna do them all at once. This is what works for our family. It's helping me to raise early um, confident readers and I know it will help you to raise readers as well. It's a cozy time. It's a time that I know my kids are gonna remember because we're all snuggled up together in bed and we're reading favorite stories. Um, it makes a time for connections. I know my daughter, um, it's often a time that she shares things that have happened at school with my husband. She has a connection with him, you know, that she feels that she can trust him and she's very safe at night. And that she can tell him what's happening at school during our story time, our reading time. And it's really cute because every week she gets an Arthur book from the library just for my husband because he likes the Arthur book. So story time as a family can be beneficial in many different ways. 
I hope that you'll find time throughout your day to read stories to your children. One story a day is so important. Thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to sharing more tips with you next week on how you can be the difference in the lives of the children that you work with or that you are raising. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye. Thank you, Ruby, for helping. Thank you.